this episode of Command N, find out what you're doing on Google every month, a more fun way to answer your emails, and Jeff does a review of the latest Final Cut Pro. Thank you to Hover for sponsoring this episode of Command N. I just noticed in my Google Plus feed that Robert McMahon Jr. has been using our promo code and promoting it. And this is what he says. I have just successfully completed transferring all 14 of my domains from GoDaddy to Hover. I want to tell you that after 20 years of buying and owning many domain names, working with Hover has by far been my most pleasurable experience. Great testimonial. If you want to take advantage of our deal on Hover, all you have to do is visit commandn.hover.com. The switch to Timeline 4 brands is now mandatory. This could be a good thing for a lot of companies based on a report that was cited on Mashable stating that there is a 46% increase in how much fans are interacting with brands when they're now using the new Timeline feature. Also, a lot of companies have gotten very creative with their own timelines. One, for example, is Mr. Clean, who has lots of fun and quirky posts. So now that this is mandatory, many companies will have to figure out how to use Timeline best. Mr. Clean gets rid of dirt and grime and grease in just a minute. Mr. Clean will clean your whole house and everything that's in it. Floors, doors, walls, halls, white sidewall tires and old golf balls. Sinks, stoves, bathtubs, he'll do. He'll even help clean laundry too. Mr. Clean gets rid of dirt and grime and grease in just a minute. Mr. Clean will clean your whole house and everything that's in it. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. All right, next house. Twitter recently celebrated a birthday, so I can't imagine a better time for a company to introduce Twitter toilet paper. Yes, this is for real. If you choose to, you can get all of your tweets printed on toilet paper. Now, it's a little bit expensive, a fair warning. It costs about $35 for four rolls of toilet paper. That's a lot of money, but hey, if you want a creative way to, I guess, decorate your bathroom, it's a good idea. Google recently launched activity reports, so if you want to find out where you're wasting time across many different Google products, you are now able to do this all for free. All you do is log in with your Google credentials and then it will spit you out a regular report. That report will include details about your time spent on everything from Google Plus to searching, top items that you're searching for, and can be kind of handy if you want to study your web usage. Now, music revenues are down by about $8 billion a year since Napster first came on the scene. So that's a chunk of what we're looking for. But total movie revenues across theaters, home video, and pay-per-view are up. And TV, satellite, and cable revenues are way up. Other content markets like book publishing and radio are also up. So this small missing chunk here is puzzling. Since the big content markets have grown in line with historic norms, it's not additional growth that piracy has prevented, but copyright math tells us it must therefore be foregone growth in a market that has no historic norms, one that didn't exist in the 90s. What we're looking at here is the insidious cost of ringtone piracy. A couple of episodes ago, we talked about SOPA and issues related to copyright infringement. And so this ep, we thought we would share some insights from Rob Reed, whose recent TED Talk unveiled the concept of copyright math, a new field of study based on actual numbers from entertainment industry lawyers and lobbyists. Rob Reed is the founder of the company that launched Rhapsody, the music subscription service, and the talk is called the $8 billion iPod. One of the industry stats that Rob takes issue with is the claim that over $58 billion of, of uh, damages are done to the U.S. economy every year due to this type of content theft. Rob points out that content theft must be an enormous issue given that this number is larger than the impact would be from the entire United States corn, wheat, cotton, tobacco, rice, sorghum, and fruit crops failing. And looking at MPAA claims that 373,000 American jobs are lost each year due to content theft, Rob points out that this number of jobs would actually exceed the total number of jobs in the motion picture, video, and music industry combined based on stats from a decade ago from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. So whatever the growth of the industry at that time, and don't forget that while the music industry has been losing money, 
the video industry, uh, theater, home, pay-per-view sources, TV, satellite, and cable, those are all way up. So the MPAA numbers just don't add up in the end. Finally, the industry's claim of $150,000 per copy per song of damages is another claim that Mr. Reed takes issue with. Looking at a modern iPod classic that can hold 40,000 songs, an avid downloader could have $8 billion worth of content in their pocket. I think this shows how manipulative the industry and the politicians that support it can be around this topic. And while as, as somebody who's been a professional musician, I feel for the people who can't make their living in the industry in the way that they used to be, but the fact is that inexpensive modern technology, robust public distribution systems, and lots of other things mean that it's easier to succeed based on merit and your own sweat equity today than it ever has been before for creative artists. Check out Rob Reed's talk at TED.com and let us know what you think in the episode comments or through our social media channels. Last time I looked, Rob's video had more than 700,000 views. And speaking of video, Command N has over the years gone from SD to HD. I first edited the show in iMovie, and most recently Jeff is testing out the new Final Cut Pro and he has a review of it. Final Cut Pro 10 reimagines movie making and post-production. It streamlines every step of the process with a breakthrough interface, so you can work faster and be more creative than ever before. I just wanted to do a quick review of the new Final Cut Pro X or 10 or whatever you want to call it. And this is a major, major change to the film editing software, as big a change, I would say, as was made to iMovie recently. And it leaves behind the anachronistic film reel-based metaphors of, of bins and whatnot for a more modern file-based workflow. Uh, there's a big learning curve on it. I used the lynda.com tutorials and they were fantastic and frankly necessary for me to go through to actually be able to finish all the editing I wanted to do, which was just last episode of Command N actually. And while the first incarnation of the new Final Cut Pro had some omissions that people were right to complain about. These have been addressed with updates now, so there's multicam editing and other necessities for a, a modern professional editing suite. And while I had to upgrade my old Mac Pro's graphic card, the fact that Final Cut Pro 10 takes full advantage of multi-core processors, of 64-bit architecture, it means that even on an older machine like this, I've gained a lot of speed for editing and rendering and other tasks. So between the process and the processor improvements, I would say my editing time is probably cut down by a full third. I don't even think that's an exaggeration. They've reduced the price to just $300, which is the big, big cut. And for motion and compressor, the, rela the related apps to this, they're just $50 a piece. They even have a free trial of Final Cut Pro 10 that you can try out for 30 days if you're not convinced. But I'm definitely convinced, so take a look at it. I'm Jeff MacArthur. Enjoy. My web pick this week is something that I discovered from Chris Brogan. It's a service called The Email Game. It's for anyone out there who uses Gmail and wants a better way and faster way and a fun way to answer their emails. All you have to do once you've logged in with your Gmail credentials is start answering emails and there is a little countdown along with the game. So this means that you are inspired to answer as many emails as possible, which is great for someone like me who gets a lot of emails and doesn't necessarily always love answering them. That's all for this episode of Command N. As always, you can find us online at commandn.tv. If you want to send us a link or send us a web pic, all you have to do is email us at info at commandn.tv. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Rob points out that this content theft must be really enormous given that this number of $58 billion is more than if the, if the U.S. Uh, crops of uh, cotton, wheat, I'm going to make them up in a different <laughs> order. <laughs>